Good morning. I am excited again to be here. I probably say that most every time that I come onto the video, but I really am. Uh, yesterday was Halloween. We uh, had a uh, an interesting time together here at the church um, with a drive-through uh, Halloween candy giveaway. Uh, we had a lot of people dressed up like a lot of strange things, but it was really good to see the kids and how much fun the kids had, and we enjoyed uh, our time together. I am glad to share with you this morning uh, on the first day of November as we begin together in this month of, of Thanksgiving. Uh, I want to read from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter of uh, Psalm 122, uh, begin with the first verse. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jer Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord God, I will seek your prosperity. Amen and amen. I've heard the story. It never really happened to me, but I have heard the story of a, a young man uh, and his mom went to wake him up. And she started out with a very uh, gentle voice, just kind of nudging the little the boy with her, with her voice. Son, it's time to wake up and go to work. And the voice from the son came back, oh, mom, do I have to? Yes, son, they'll be waiting for you. But mom, I know those people really don't like me. Do I have to go? Son, you have to get up. You have to put your suit on and you have to go. But mom, they don't even listen to me over there. So I don't want to go. Mama started getting a little more upset and Mama began to little, get a little more harsh in her tone. And she said to him, look, son, it's Sunday. You are 53 years old and you're the preacher. So get going. Now, uh, to be honest, I do hear a lot of, of I don't hear a lot of thankfulness coming from that 53 year old uh, preacher. And it was when his mom told him that day that it was Sunday, he only wanted to pull the covers up over his head and he wanted to stay asleep. He wanted to stay home. But we are called, all of us are called to be thankful people. Over the next few weeks, we will be looking at this whole concept. We will be looking at this whole idea of what you and I are grateful for. We, today we begin with a thankfulness for the church. Thankful for the church and our worship time. We give thanks to God for the church because the church is a place we can praise God both collectively and individually. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Through Jesus, let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise. Isn't that pretty? Through Jesus, let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise. And in Psalm 34, 3, it says, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For us, that ch the church is this place. The place where we can come together and offer our sacrifice of praise. It's the place where we can come together and glorify God. We come together to do these things, but the church is so much more. Because the church is the people. All of the people. We gather in Jesus' name. We gather in Jesus' name and we share our love for him. And when we come together, we share our love for each other. 
we give thanks for the church because we come together and we lift up our voice to Jesus. We give thanks for the church because it's where we come together and we know that Christ is here and he will meet us. The interesting part of that is that here with, there are so many reasons why each and every one of us are here. There's so many reasons why he is here with us. Scripture reminds us again and again that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. We are gathered together in his name and he is here. He is here. We can never, ever lose sight of that. He is here. He is here with you. He is here with me. He's here to hear and answer our prayers. Probably the most sacred time during a worship service is the time we spend in prayer. We start our service with, with an invocation, asking Jesus, asking God to come near and draw near to us as we are present in our worship. We have a time of intercessory prayer in our service that we call our prayers for others. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are hurting. We pray for those who are suffering loss. Some we pray for by name and some we pray for by as an unspoken request. God and the one who has requested the prayer only knows who that really is. But that's what matters. We have a prayer during our worship time asking God to illumine, to, to lighten up and show to us the words of the Bible during our service. So that we might learn more about God and his will and the way his will reads and shares through, to us through his word. And at the end of the service, we have a blessing. We call it a benediction or a closing prayer. And we ask God to, to be with us as we, as we leave this place and as we go out into the world in the week ahead. God is here to bless us, to guide us, to encourage us, and to strengthen us through his presence. God is here to bring peace. His peace in a troubled world. His peace in a stressful life. His peace in our side of our anxious hearts. We give thanks. We give thanks for the church. Because the church is to be a place of like-minded people. Friends and family coming together. Paul calls us brothers and sisters in Christ. The church is a place of friends who deeply care for one another. The church is a place of friends who love you for you. And going along with the concept and the ideal of friends, we know that the church is also a place of support. It shouldn't matter what we're going through. It shouldn't matter what's happening in our lives. We can draw together and support one another. And Christ calls us to do this, to do that. He reminds us that Jesus is the answer to all the problems we might be going through. It is a place where we find people with Jesus in their hearts and skin on, and they listen. The church is a place of closest relationships. I remember growing up, my parents would tell all of us boys, if you want to find someone to marry, and if you want to find the right person to marry, you will find them in the church, or in some cases, maybe in church camp. I believe with all my heart that the, the relationship we build in church, they're generally strong, and they're unselfish, and they're the longest lasting relationships as in for all eternity why because the relationships we build in church are built on christ and they're built on christian love we are called to be a thankful people 
We are called to give thanks, to, to voice all those things that we are thankful for. I would like to ask you to help me to do this during the month of November. November will be a month of thanks. And during this time, we will, we will give you strips of paper. Or we will have strips of paper. And, and on these strips of paper, all you have to do is, it will, it will say on there, I am thankful for. And this is what we call, I am thankful for sheets. As you come and go into church for, uh, during this whole month, write something on that little piece of paper. Something that you're thankful for. And then place it in a box that we will have in the vestibule. And you don't have to sign your name to that paper. You don't have to say who it's from unless you want to. And you don't have to mention anybody by name. And as, as you hear the sermons or you think about something during the month of November that you're thankful for, you might want to write down, I am thankful for maybe a situation, maybe a person, maybe a feeling. Anything you want to write down that you're thankful for, that's between you and God. And then put it in a box, or in the box. Now, I won't read them every Sunday, but we will compile a list of these things. We in the, these things that we in the Litchfield Common Presbyterian Church are thankful for. And at the end, we will share them together. Today, we started with how we should be thankful. We should be thankful for our church. We should be thankful for its people. We should be thankful for the body of Christ that is lived out in the world. Let's participate in this together. For the remainder of, of November, let us share together these things. I myself am thankful for the church. And I myself am thankful for the people of the church. You make me smile. Sometimes you make me cry, and when you hurt, I hurt. You make me think of Jesus because I see him in you. You make me humble. You restore my faith in people. I think of your children as my children, and your children are special to me. I, like you, want to shelter all of our children from the, from the world and from the hurt that the world brings. You make me thankful. You, are, you make me thankful because you are a blessing to me and my family. Thankful for friends and family that I've made here. It's a, it's a group that I will be thankful for for all of eternity. And I will be thankful, too, that I will be able to spend all of eternity with you around the throne and at the table and worshiping Jesus forever and ever. Amen.